So yeah, going back to muscle growth and exercise. So when you exercise, um, let's say that you're exercising on a calorie deficit. Your body is basically saying, I need to lose weight, but I'm going to keep the muscle because this person is actually using it. Dave, he's going to the gym all the time. So Dave is actually using his muscle. So let's keep the muscle because Dave's using the muscle. That's basically what the body's saying. That's why exercise is so important. Also, it's important for all these other reasons too. Is there a difference between doing yoga and, and lifting heavy weights? Yeah. What's the difference? Hmm? But I mean in regards to a physical outcome. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm generalizing by the way. I'm, I'm generalizing quite a lot. But... Hmm? Yeah. Basically what I'm trying to get at is you've got the three different types of muscle and when you're doing like jogging, walking, uh, yoga, things like that, things which we call endurance training or endurance exercise, you tend not to grow that much muscle, at least physically, as in size, but you do become more fit. You, you, your blood flow improves, you know, you, you, you get more endurance. Whereas if you're going to grow, if you want to actually grow in physical size, then you want to be focusing more on weight training, um, short bursts of energy, such as sprinting, uh, things like that. They, that. Because it's associated more with type 2 muscles. Now type 2 muscle fibres are more associated with actual size. Whereas type 1 muscles are more associated with endurance, fitness, things like that. And I'll show you what I mean, because it probably doesn't make that much sense right now. But if you look at these three people here, that's a marathon runner, that's a bodybuilder, powerlifter, and you know who that guy in the middle is? Bolt. Yep, Bolt. But, um, so so these, are these are kind of like stereotyped. It's not as simple as this because the truth is if you do a bit of type 1, if you grow a bit of type 1 fibres, you will still grow some type 2. But the majority of what you grow will be type 1. So if you, let's say you do lots of jogging, you do marathon running, you will tend to become more fit because you're focusing more on the type 1, which is endurance. But you will also grow a little bit of type 2. Okay? And likewise, if you do lots of weight training, you're going to make a lot of type 2 muscles, but you also make a little bit of type 1. So you will get a bit more fit, but you'll also grow size. That's the main thing, if you do muscle, muscle growth exercises, like uh, weight training and things like that. Is that making sense? Have I explained it properly? OK, so again, weight training is very important for all of these reasons, okay? which I'm not going to go into now, but it's very, very important. Muscle grows in three ways. Does anyone know what progressive tension overload is? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. But so basic. Yeah. Basically, what it is is. Yeah. You're right. So, it's like for example, let's say you go to. The, let me go to the side actually. Let's say that you go to the gym and you lift, let's say you're doing a bench press and you lift 50 kilograms and do six reps. You know what six reps are, right? Yeah. Like six reps are 50 kilograms and, and that's it. <clears throat> I'm dead, I can't do it anymore. And a week later, you go to the gym and you can do seven reps. And then a the week after that, or two weeks after, you can do eight reps. That's progressive tension overload. Likewise, you go to the gym, one day you do 50 kilograms, six reps, and then the following week you go and you do 51 reps, 51 kilograms, and then the following week after that, 55 kilograms. That's the progressive tension overload. Okay? So what you're doing is you're challenging your body every time you go to the gym. And the body is taking a beating. The muscles are taking a beating. And they're saying, look, man, we took a real beating today. We've got to make sure that we're strong enough so next time he tries to beat us, we can handle it. Hence, the muscles get stronger and they get bigger. And that's what progressive tension overload is. Cellular fatigue. This is the other way that muscle grows. This is, we got, this is more to do with lifting, light, for example, lifting lighter weights so you can do more reps, but you're getting that horrible burning sensation at the end of it. But it's focusing on, um, like, I'd say 10 to 15 reps, that kind of thing, um, time under tension, that kind of, where you lift the weight really slowly, but you do loads of reps. And at the end of it, you end up with that like, burning sensation. That's more cellular fatigue. And that's another way that your, your, your muscles grow. 
and then muscle damage, which pretty much happens when you do any type of weight training. You do, so, you do create some inflammation and damage to the muscle, and during the repair process, the muscle becomes stronger. So those are the three ways that muscle grows. Out of all of those three ways, the most effective and the most dramatic is actually progressive tension overload. So, in my third book, which is coming out in November, I'm going to be focusing on all of those three disciplines. But that's another story. In order to grow muscle, remember I said in the first slide that you need energy. For most people, if you want to actually grow in size, you need to eat more calories than you're burning. What's the downside of doing that? Hmm? You, get bigger. you get bigger. What's the downside of eating more calories than you burn? You get a bit more, you get a little bit of fat as well. Yep, and that's something called bulking. There are four times when you can actually grow muscle, new muscle, and burn fat at the same time. Which is ideal, but it's only in four times, and I'm gonna talk about that real quick. If you've never been to the gym before, you're on a diet, let's say you're on a 15% calorie restriction, you've never been to the gym before, and you're going to start going to the gym and start weight training. For the first six months to a year, you're going to grow muscle and lose fat at the same time. Isn't that amazing? Bodybuilders refer to that as a honeymoon phase, okay, because it doesn't last forever. After the first year, it becomes harder. That's why I was saying earlier when I was 16, I do a few press-ups and my chest would just come out like this. But after 25 years of training, it's not the same. Obese individuals, again, it's uses the same, um, uh, the sa the same um, process as with beginners. Obese, the more fat you have, the more energy that fat, the, the excess fat that you have, is used to essentially um, feed the muscle. So when you go to the gym and you start weight training and you're obese, you will grow muscle relatively quickly, even during a calorie deficit. Steroid users. Why is that? Yeah. Testosterone is going through the roof. Even on a calorie deficit, they're going to lay down new muscle. And then people who, let's say, have had an injury, detrained individuals, we call them. So let, I had an injury. I'll show you real quick. A weight fell on my shoulder. 20, 20 kg weight fell on my shoulder. Um, fractured my AC joint. Um, I, I was actually looking much more muscular <laughs> around six months ago but I couldn't train for a while because of this injury. And it was really bad. I, had to, um, I was very close to having surgery, actually. Point is that I was detrained. I couldn't train for six months. More recently, I've been going to the gym and I've been getting that muscle back, even though I haven't been eating that many calories. So I'm a detrained individual. And essentially, from a physiological point of view, it's a bit like being a beginner. Your body is kind of going through shock, if you like. And um, so those are the only four times that you can grow muscle and lose fat at the same time. Unfortunately, if you don't fit into those four categories, if you want to grow muscle, you have to go through a bulking phase whereby you eat more calories than you burn and you gain a little bit of fat, but you also gain a little bit of muscle as well. Now, is that all making sense? So just to summarize, bulking is when you're basically increasing weight in, the, in a... Um, you, you, you're eating more calories because you want to grow more muscle, but you are going to gain a little bit of fat as well. Cutting means that you are actually on a calorie deficit, but you're still weight training to maintain the muscle that you have. Okay, so this is where, this is where the magic starts, okay? It gets a little bit interesting now. And this is what, hard, this is what I had to do, basically, um, and what a lot of people I find don't do. Assess your body fat. Okay, and go through phases of bulking and cutting, bulking and cutting. Generally speaking, if you're below 13-14% body fat as a male, or 22% females, if you're under that, then you can start bulking if you like, if you want to go for that athletic look and you're not happy with the way you look. Let's say that you're too thin or you want to gain muscle. Then, um, as a general rule of thumb, if your body fat percentages are less than that, then you can start to bulk and, and add some muscle but you will gain a little bit of fat as well. Once you go above 23, 24%, or above 15, 16% in men, then you can start thinking about cutting. 
And cutting is when you basically maintain that new muscle, I repeat, new muscle that you've grown during the bulking phase, whilst trimming down the fat. You're basically sculpturing your body. And repeated cycles of bulking and cutting during regular weight training sessions will get you that lean athletic look that I was talking about in the beginning. And this is all based on science, it's not based on opinion or anything like that. This is 100% the case with 99.9% .9 of people. There are a few genetically, genetic freaks out there, but for most people, this is certainly the case. And these are real before and after pictures of people who have applied these principles. Okay? That guy there is actually a good friend of mine. Okay. The same with women too, not just men. Okay, And then there's me. And that was my 10 week, after 10 weeks, um, that's what I used to look like, this big fat stomach. 10 weeks of applying everything I talked about, and you can see a bit of a difference there. After 10 months, you can see that six pack coming back. Okay? And that's all I was doing, bulking and cutting, bulking and cutting. Now someone asked me the other day, how long does this take? How long does it take to grow muscle? Now do you remember what I said a bit earlier about beginners? Do you remember? Was anyone paying attention? Yeah. <laughs> what did I say about beginners? Hmm? Yes, yeah. Beginners, according to this guy, Lyle McDonald, who's a, a genius, he's um, someone who's he's a bit of a nerd, to be honest with you. He spent his whole life following bodybuilders and, and measuring their biceps and things like that. And, <laughs> yeah, and things like that. But he came up with this, he came up with that, this model, whereby he basically said that during a five-year five year training period, if you've never been to the gym before, so in your first year, you can actually gain up to 25 pounds of muscle in one year. So if you've never been to the gym, you start going to the gym, even if you're not training properly, even if you're just throwing weights around like I did when I was 16, the, the fact that it's new to the body will stimulate muscle growth at an exponential rate. Up to two pounds of muscle per month, and that's a lot of muscle. This is one pound of muscle. Do you want to pass this around? So imagine two pounds of muscle that you're adding if you're a beginner going to the gym, training. After that, year two, it gets a bit slower. You might do one, one, um, one pound per month. Year three, it gets a little bit slower. And then after year three, year four, you produce even less muscle. So really, we're looking at the, around three years of intense training can get you an amazing body, you know, like the bodies that you saw a bit earlier. Who's heard of this guy, Michael Matthews? He wrote bestseller, bigger, stronger, What's the name of the book again? Um, I can't remember now. Bigger, Stronger, Leaner or something. And uh, this guy, Michael Matthews, again, he's someone who went to the gym every single day, okay, apparently, every single day uh, for an hour, for around five years. And he decided to track, or well, six years, he decided to track his progress. So that was between year two and year eight. He didn't know what he was doing. He didn't have any real plan. I don't know his age, but he wanted to track his, he wanted, he was very serious because he wanted, he was, he was a bit like me when I was younger. He, he was reading all these muscle magazines and trying to figure out what's the right way to do this. In year eight, he decided, he realized that he didn't really, he doesn't look that much different in those six years for someone who's been training, you know, almost every day. He started to read the books. He started to look into the same people I've been looking into. And he applied that science that I just mentioned about resistance training, bulking, cutting. And you can see the difference between year eight and year 11. Just by, just by simply applying the concepts that I've been discussing over the last 45 minutes. And that was during three years. As I said before, Lyle McDonald's um, description is the, the, the three years that you train hard is going to be the time when you get the most amount of muscle. After that, it becomes harder because you lay down less muscle. So let's put all the pieces together. You calculate your maintenance calories. Yeah, that's what we discussed in the beginning. Calculate your current body fat percentage. Decide whether you want to bulk, in other words, add new muscle, or whether you want to cut, in other words, lose a bit of fat. Prioritize which one? I was waiting for someone to ask me that. Um, there's various ways. I'm going to show you, literally at the end, different ways you can assess your body fat. There's the only real accurate way is the most unfeasible way. And that's uh, something called a bod pod, which costs, I think, 200 pounds and it measures your body fat, it measures your um, skin body fat, it also measures your 
uh, visceral fat, it measures everything. But it's not really, it's not realistically feasible because you don't want to spend 200 pounds every week or whatever to assess your body fat levels. Yeah, that's called um, bio bioelectric impedance, which is those um, things that you hold on to, isn't it? And it sends a current around your body. Very inaccurate, but extremely inaccurate, but that is one other way. Um, so yeah, cutting, uh, this pretty much goes over what I've been saying before. Cutting, you uh, look at if you're 13% or less as a man, um, then, um, well, you want to cut or you want to uh, gain. And bulking, same thing. Is that making sense? Okay. Yeah, so as I say, with, with uh, women, it's, women have more um, natural body fat, so um, it, it tends to be a higher amount in, in, in women than men. Um, but the principles are exactly the same. Now that's all, folks. Thanks for listening. Any questions?